Look at this cute fish. You're such a cutie. Oh, you like that? Hmm? You're such a cutie. Yes, you are. <laughs> Good morning guys and welcome to another day in beautiful Australia. We managed not to burn down the campsite yesterday. That's always good. Hey, we have a little visitor this morning. Yeah. Look who decided to show up hi. and say hi. <laughs> now, we had a lot of things planned in the Kakadu National Park, but because of some shifting in our schedule, mm -hmm. we did a lot of stuff earlier. Mm -hmm. We skipped a few things. So now we only have a few things left to do, so we can really take our time mm -hmm. and do them. But we can always do a few extra hikes if we ex have extra time. And we didn't get eaten by mosquitoes! No. Yes! Not like yesterday. Mm -hmm. And this little visitor stopped by yesterday and scared the hell out of me. Yeah. This dark shade coming Hi. from the forest. Hi! And then I saw this cute little fish. It was just a puppy. <laughs> I don't know whose dog this is. <laughs> now it's ours. Yeah. It's gonna be a road trip dog. Yes, you're a cutie. Hey guys, we're at Nurlangi Rock. Um, we're going to do a short hike of about an hour and a half. This is part of a ranger guided tour that we were going to do one morning, but we just didn't get up in time. It was at that one campsite with a lot of mosquitoes and we just didn't want to go out in like a swarm of hundreds of mosquitoes then. So we're doing it now. Okay, so it looks like uh, we already made a mistake. On the first sign here it says that you shouldn't call this Nurlangi Rock because <laughs> that's what it was named by like European settlers and the white man. You should call the lower part Arnangbang or Arnangbarn. It's really <laughs> difficult to, to pronounce it sometimes like Arnangbarn. <laughs> anyway, and the upper part is called Burung, Burung Goy. So Arnang, Arn, Arn bang bang and Burongoi is what you should call it. Or I'll it. just call it Nurlangi Rock. Yeah. <laughs> it also says that the original clan that was supposed to take care after this land, according to traditional law, uh, isn't around anymore. According to the same traditional law, the neighboring clans should take care of this land now, which is what's going on right now. So this is the walk we're going to do today. You have all these art sites over here. And like... Almost everything is disabled access, so it should be pretty flat. It's, it's only uh, one and a half kilometers, so... Yeah. This one is more uh, culturally important. It's also getting midday, and it's getting uh -huh. warm again, so it's probably not a good idea to go on another, like, four-hour yeah. difficult hike through rainforest conditions yeah. and stuff like that. So we're taking it a bit easier today, but still... Appreciating nature and appreciating mm -hmm. the culture that's around here. Looks like it's a bit harder than we anticipated. <laughs> we didn't expect there to be steps. Like in the first five minutes, we've had to walk all the way up here. We're already exhausted. <sighs> Here's some examples of some rock art. It's really amazing how well these are preserved over the years. Like some of them are so clear. We already learned that it's not the painting itself, but the art of like the, the painting itself, the action. the action of the act of painting is the important part. So they would paint over older paintings just to tell new, new stories, stories and stuff yeah. like that. You can't change other people's paintings, like try to touch it up no. because you will mess with the spirit of that painting. But you can paint your own paint, painting on top of some, on, some older paintings. So. Mm -hmm. Look at this fat kangaroo. Reminds me of someone. Hmm. Me? I'm not a fat kangaroo. <laughs> you could be if you wanted to. I'm not even a kangaroo. No, no okay. <laughs> and I'm not a fat either. <laughs> Something also very interesting about the fact that they paint uh, new art over, oh, <laughs> over existing art. Because over the years the art style changed, they can date some of these art pieces back to certain periods of time. Something we learned, I think yesterday it was, that these kind of x-ray kind of drawings, mm -hmm. where you see the insides of the animals that they're painting, mm -hmm. was only originated like about 2,000 years ago or something like that. You can see that these are pretty recent, mm -hmm. where an older one, like the big fat kangaroo over there, might be a lot older, mm -hmm. like you. <laughs> I thought you made a very convincing kangaroo though. 
the one time you uh, lost the pool game Thanks. and had to hop around the pool table. If you want to watch that video, check it out here. Yeah, I think so. And that's how we get you to watch all our videos. <laughs> and here you can see a kangaroo and a hunter with a man bun. Hmm. <laughs> Check out Steve's man bun in this video. Oh no. This kind of symbolizes us. You got like the guy with the man bun and then the fat kangaroo next to it. <laughs> How did they know? How did they know that we would be here hundreds of years later? It's not only the paintings that give you like a clue about Aboriginal life here. Like if you can see these holes and there's a bunch over there as well. These were used to like grind up seeds and other plants and stuff so they could eat. So there's a lot of clues around here if you know where to look. So this is Narbulwinbulwin. And he's a dangerous spirit who eats females after striking them with a yam. I don't know. <laughs> it is another great example of x-ray art though. Like if you see here, you can see like the ribs. It's, it's a human figure, obviously. And you can see like the bones and the ribs. And I think these are supposed to be muscles or something. So it's cool how they had a basic understanding of human anatomy and animal anatomy. That's what I take from this story. <laughs> You're probably looking at the penis. <laughs> <laughs> how can you not? <laughs> I still don't know why he strikes females with a yam. I'm just There's trying to get that reason. picture out of my head. Yeah, true. <laughs> he probably has a good reason though. Like why why else would you choose a yam? <laughs> what else would you do with a yam? I mean <laughs> strike women of course. We made it to the top of a lookout and look at that view. It's impressive, right? Yeah. And there is the final resting place of the lightning man. Around there somewhere. And, and it is a very dangerous place and you shouldn't disturb it. Otherwise the lightning man will wake up and will cause you, lightning probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now all these stories, ah, I'm zooming in. All these stories kind of sound like children's stories that you would tell your children to frighten them, not to, like to stay away from them and stuff. Mm -hmm. and that's exactly what they are. Yeah. Like that's it. That's the level that we non-Aboriginal people are told. The children's level, level of stories. Yeah. That makes it a bit more logical that these stories don't make that much sense to us. Mm -hmm. Because it's more like a children's tale. If you don't want your child to go into a cupboard, you say that there's like a boogeyman in there and he will <laughs> get you if you try to get into the cupboard. Yeah. That's kind of what these stories sound like to us. Okay guys, that was that. Uh, we're heading to back to the car park now. Mm -hmm. That was the 1.5 kilometer hike and I'm actually tired. <laughs> I don't know why. But it's, it's so hot out, it's out hot. today. Yeah, so. it's hot and I don't have energy today. I, don't know. I think it's time for like a big unhealthy, unsaturated fat <laughs> or, or saturated fat, uh, greasy lunch. Oh, why? <laughs> why do you say that? I don't know. I really feel like going for some veggie burger with french fries. We yeah. saw on the menu in the visitor center that they had a veggie burger. Mm -hmm. uh, we had like no, one good, good lunch yeah. with, with fruit. I like, think it's like one or two videos ago. We're like, oh, we always eat bread with lunch. Now we want uh, Now we need vegetables and fruit. And vegetables, and fruit. <laughs> just one lunch. Yeah. No, okay. That's enough for the rest of the year. Let's go eat a burger. We try <laughs> to live a healthy life and we try to be more healthy and health conscious and stuff like that but it's really difficult to alter your uh, like Lifestyle. your habits but we do eat a lot more fruit and vegetables mm -hmm. than before we lost 10 kilos since yeah. we started just by eating like more fruit and vegetables obviously more hiking as well yeah of course <laughs> whenever we settle down somewhere in an apartment or a house or something we are just a little bit more like during the night when we sit in front of the TV, we oh, feel yeah. like having chips and like chocolate and things like that. But when we're camping, we don't yeah. for some reason. Exactly. Like we go to bed at 10, there's no TV and we don't get like the urge to... No, whenever we're camping, yeah. it's like we, we live more according to the way we're supposed to. Like when uh -huh. it gets dark, yeah. it's dark and you can't do anything anymore. So you just, you go to bed uh -huh. and then you wake up early when the sun comes out. So. Exactly. And I crave a lot more fruit and vegetables when we're like camping and living outside for some reason. But yeah. when we settle down, I, I want chips and cookies and... <laughs>
Maybe I when we get back home, we should we should just buy a camper van or yeah. something or and a tent. Just, just live and in a tent. Live, live outside. Here's our veggie burger. Apparently, they didn't have fries, so that's good actually. Mm -hmm. And they don't have a veggie patty, so it's excellent. Actually, just a vegetable. Vegetable roll. Not so. It's greasy mm. and unsaturated fat burger no. like you wanted, but... I'm kind of glad in a way yeah. that we were, we were protected from our own craving. Yeah. <laughs> so we just spent some time at the visitor center checking out uh, the documentaries that they show yeah. at the theater. And it's already, what time? I like think it's 4, 4 p.m. or 4 something? 4.30 or something, yeah. yeah. So we're gonna look for, a, for another campsite for tonight. We want to get up tomorrow morning to do some bird watching. There is a bird watching platform somewhere in the national park and we're thinking about getting up early and trying to spot some birds. All right, I just set up the tent. Steve is cooking dinner. Pasta! Pasta! We are a very modern family. How so? Because I'm setting up the tent oh, okay. and you're cooking. Yeah. I'm doing that male thing and you're doing that female thing. <laughs> hey guys, good morning. Apparently there were a lot of mosquitoes at the other campsite. Maybe not as much as the, that one time, no, but not. still a lot. Uh, and now we're at the bird watching platform and we're about to go watch some birds. So I think you need a good pair of binoculars to actually see some birds. Yeah, these birds were pretty far away on the, I don't know, was it a wetland? It or looked something? like a wetland, yeah. Something like that, so like that's, pond maybe. Yeah, it's a very big open space. Mm -hmm. So yeah, most and of the birds were very far in the distance. Yeah, and I do have the zoom lens, mm -hmm. but even with that, you can uh -huh. really get up close yeah. to them. We did already see lots of wildlife, lots of birds, and even a few wallabies just like Popping we've been around. up, we've been up for an hour. There's one right now. He's still hopping around there. Oh, it's too far away. Anyways, we've been up for like an hour, and we already saw quite a lot of animals. Yeah. So in if the mosquitoes, morning, mosquitoes. If, if mosquitoes count as wildlife, we've seen thousands already. <laughs> That's true. We just took down our tent and put all our stuff away and we are saying goodbye to this campsite. We might head back to the information center though because we are so addicted to coffee that we would go out of our, out of our way just to get it. And that's what we're going to do right now. Yeah. No, the only thing we still have plans for today is going to Darwin uh -huh. to check into our hostel and check out Darwin, of course. But we can't check in yet because it's only like 9 o'clock in the morning. Because, because we still have time, yeah. why not? just enjoy Kakadu some more and go to the information <laughs> okay. center. We, we spent more time in the information center than actually hiking and just exploring Kakadu. Yeah. Anyways, coffee. Coffee. And here we are at our regular spot. I have my laptop ready. And you know why I have my laptop ready? So I can look if Darwin has some delicious vegan restaurants. <laughs> Plus, Priorities, guys. Plus, we, we forgot which hostel we booked. Oh, yeah, so we don't really true. know where to go next. So that's why I have to. <laughs> that's true, I forgot that. I was too focused on the vegan vegan food. The coffees have arrived. <gasps> so I can't. Mm. I really like this coffee. Me too, it's really good. Mm -hmm. That's why we keep coming back, yeah. I guess. The thing is, I never used to drink coffee. I didn't understand like coffee addiction or like. It was alright, but I was like, why would you ever drink it every day? Until I graduated and started working at, a, at an office where there was free coffee. You know, just working at the desk all the time. You sometimes want to stretch your legs. I automatically went to the coffee machine to get a coffee and I ended up drinking coffee every day. And now I love it. And I don't want to love it, but I do. But once I get back home, I'll, I'll detox. So. Sure. Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay guys, so we're leaving Kakadu behind us and we're finally heading towards Darwin right now. It's kind of a big deal because we haven't told you guys yet. We have a big announcement to make. Uh, something that by the time you guys see this, everyone back home will know. Yeah. But we are going back home in two weeks. Come as 
quite of a surprise because we haven't mentioned this yet to anyone. <laughs> um, but we decided to go back home about two months, maybe three months earlier than we planned originally mm -hmm. because your best friend uh, is expecting, is expecting, <laughs> she's going baby. to have a baby. Her first baby. Yeah, it, it, it's such a huge moment in our lives that we really wanted to be there for yeah. that. And we wanted to surprise everyone, and especially her, yeah. by coming back yeah. sooner. Like I knew she was going to try for a baby when we were here in Australia, but I was kind of hoping that it wouldn't work for the first few months. But she got pregnant like instantly. Yeah. <laughs> and I knew the chances were that I was that we were going to miss the the birth of the baby, and I was prepared for it. But when she told us that she was pregnant. I got really sad and I, I had no idea that it would affect me that much. And yeah, I really wanted to be there. And That's why we decided to end our working holiday experience uh, in Darwin. We are still doing, doing exactly what we would have done if we didn't go back home sooner. Mm -hmm. um, but we were planning first on going from Darwin back to Cairns, driving back to Cairns and selling the car there. But like the drive back to Cairns is like another maybe six or seven days if you only drive, if you don't mm -hmm. stop like for anything, drive like six yeah. hours a day. If you go to Darwin, you have to backtrack for like six or seven hours. Yeah, before then, you can go east. Yeah, take a highway east and then you have to go back up to Cairns for like several hours again, which we didn't know when we got the idea of driving from Darwin to Cairns. We're not going to do that anymore, we're still going to go to Darwin. But we're going to fly to Cairns. We have about a week in Darwin and we're going to try to sell the car there. Uh, and then we fly to Cairns, have another week there, and then we fly back home yeah. to Belgium back home. on the 5th of August. Uh -huh. It's it's kind of good to get it off our chest. Yeah. Like we, we know, and some people here in Australia know, because who are they going to tell, right? Uh -huh. But we want to keep it a secret for everyone yeah. back home. And, no and sharing it with, with you, like with the video, like, Makes it a bit weird, makes it a bit more real, yeah. especially since we're going to Darwin now, it's it's getting really real. Uh -huh. Once we're in Darwin, our trip is over, like yeah. our road trip is over, the traveling part is over. Yeah, all the new experiences all, are almost done. Yeah, we can just spend two weeks just tanning, because everyone back home expects us to be like super tan. Yeah. Although we spent four months in Melbourne and lost. Yeah, lost tan. most of it. Yeah. But anyway. yeah, we're going home in two weeks. What? That is so insane. But that's it, now you know. In about two hours we will be arriving in Darwin and that'll be like almost the end of it. Yeah. Oh, it feels so weird to say that! Are you right? Yeah. Oh, and I have a job interview. Yeah. We want to share that so badly with people back home that you had a job interview. But we can't because then they would know that we're coming, coming yeah. back home. I was just browsing the internet and just wondering if there was something back home. And I came across something that really interests me and I thought I'm just gonna try it and they contacted me they were really interested in, in me and they wanted a job interview so I'm doing a Skype interview yeah and if uh, you like next week when we get to Karen yeah. yeah so it would be really cool to come home and have a, have a job immediately that yeah, exactly. would be really nice so that was it for this video we're still going to take you to Darwin Still going to let you see everything that we do for the next two weeks. But that's it for today. So don't forget to subscribe, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment. See you next time. See you next time.